Those of you who are just joined us, we will get started in just about a minute. All right, we will get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Claremont College's information session. First of all, I just want to thank all of you for coming, whether it's your first time learning about the Claremont Colleges or your third or fourth time, and you've just come back to learn some more. I want to thank you for joining us today. I think I speak on behalf of all my colleagues here when I say that we are happy that you were all interested in the Claremont Colleges, and we're excited to talk to you about the consortium as a whole and our individual colleges. So the purpose of this event is for you to learn more about the Claremont Colleges Consortium, but also each school individually. And before I turn the mic over to my colleagues for introductions, I just want to give a few reminders. This session will last about one hour, with the first 45 minutes being presentation and the last 15 minutes for Q&A. So the presenters, we will introduce ourselves, and then I will provide a five-minute overview of the Claremont Colleges Consortium, and the bulk of the remaining time will be each of us presenting about our own institution. And lastly, you may notice that you're not on audio nor video, um, but you can still engage with us via the Q&A box that you should see at the bottom of your screen. You can ask us questions at any point during the hour, and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, you may choose to ask questions anonymously or not. And we'll also answer questions um, at the end of the session as well. So with all that said, I'll start the introductions with myself. My name is Anna Marie Wood, Senior Assistant Director of Admission at Scripps College. I'm also an alum from Scripps. I graduated in 2013. Um, I think Claremont is a really neat place, and I love talking about Scripps and the Claremont Colleges any chance I get. So again, I'm happy to be with you here today. And with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Tom, and you can introduce yourself. All righty. Thank you, Anna Marie. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Tom Campbell. I'm one of the assistant deans of admission at Pomona College um, in lovely Claremont, California, just south of Scripps. Um, so I, too, agree that Claremont's an awesome place to be. Um, definitely can't beat the sunshine. I'm from the, the Northeast, so a shout out to anyone from Massachusetts in particular. Um, and yeah, super looking forward to uh, telling you more about Pomona um, and taking part in the question and answer and just illustrating the consortium. So with that, I'll pass the baton on to Yanelli. Hi, thank you, Tom. Hello, everyone. So grateful to be here with you all this evening. My name is Yanelli Ruiz Buss, and I serve as an assistant dean of admissions at Claremont McKenna College. Like Anna Marie, I am also an alumna of CMC, class of 2012. Very proud of that, um, and excited to be here with you all today. So thank you for joining us. With that, I'm turning it over to my colleague, Roberto, across the street. Thank you, Anneli. Hi, everyone. I'm Roberto Pena. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at Harvard Mudd College. Um, I'm not a HM or a 5C uh, alum, but I am a liberal arts college alum, and I'm very excited to talk to you all about liberal arts colleges and Mudd specifically. So I'll pass it on over to Natalia. Perfect. Thanks, Roberto. Hi, everyone. My name is Natalia Duran. I'm an admission counselor at Pitzer, as well as an alum from Pitzer's class of 2019. I'm super excited to be here with you all and just excited to talk to you more about Pitzer and the five C's in general. So I'll go ahead and pass it back to Anna Marie. Awesome. Thank you all. And students, if you find that you're having trouble hearing us or if something is just wrong, you think technolo technologically, that's a hard word, on our end, and uh, feel free to also say that in the Q&A as well. Uh, okay, so welcome to the Claremont Colleges. We are a group, a consortium of five undergraduate colleges, Pomona College, Scripps College, Claremont McKenna College, Harvey Mudd College, and Pitzer College, and two graduate institutions, Claremont Graduate University and the Keck Graduate Institute. The Claremont Colleges, which we also refer to as the five C's or the seven C's, have a structure and organization that is unique in American higher education. Uh, and to be honest with you, I try not to use the word unique a lot in admissions presentations, um, but our group really is. Uh, each college is independent. Each college has its own campus, its own president, its own professors, per personality, dorms. Uh, we also have our own admissions processes and policies. 
So you would apply to each of us separately and we don't share applicant information. Um, that's a common question that we get. But there's a lot that we do share. We share vital campus resources, like certain academic programs, the library, we have a big library, athletic teams, I'll talk about that in a little bit, student clubs, campus safety, a health center, and so on. We also have a robust cross-registration system, meaning that a student at, say, Pitzer College could take a class at Pomona College, a Harvey Mudd student could take a class at Scripps, and so on. These classes are on the same academic portal system, so when you go to sign up for a class, they're all there. That makes logistics pretty easy. And in general, most classes across the five schools are available to most students. Uh, at small colleges, we typically don't have to deal with things like impacted majors or over-enrolled classes. So generally speaking, you're able to take advantage of this cross-registration system. And all of this happens in just one square mile in beautiful Southern California, just about an hour outside of Los Angeles. Uh, that's where the average temperature is about 77 degrees Fahrenheit year round. If you're not familiar with Southern California, that's a, a big draw for us. And when I say one square mile, that's really, really close. Um, so you can get from one end of Harvey Mudd College to the bottom of Pomona College in about a 15 to 20 minute walk. So the schools are all walking distance from each other. We don't have, you know, like a bus system that you might find in some other consortia. The only thing that separates our schools are small neighborhood streets and sidewalks. I'll give you one example from my time when I was a student at Scripps. My dorm room at Scripps was actually closer to Harvey Mudd's dining hall than it was to Scripps' own dining hall. So if I wanted to save myself like a 45-second walk in the morning on my way to class, I would stop by Mudd's dining hall instead of my own, which I did most mornings. <laughs> Um, so this consortium began almost 100 years ago in 1925 by Pomona College's president, James Blaisdell, working with Ellen Browning Scripps, who later went on to start Scripps, and they proposed this collegiate university um, design that was inspired by Oxford University in England. They wanted what a small college could provide to students, personal attention, academic flexibility, but with the resources of a large university. And today, that's what we all offer, the best of both worlds, where you have the small liberal arts college experience, but in a big school setting. So the plan way back then was to start a college in each decade of the 1900s. Scripps College was founded in 1926, then came Clement McKenna College in 1946, Harvey Mudd in the 50s, and Pitzer College in the 60s. So the reason why I like to share this little mini history lesson is because you might be wondering, um, okay, so I get that each school is different, but how are they different? What makes them different? And why would I consider one Claremont College over another as I go through my college search process? Um, each of us is so distinct, and I like to think that our history, you know, when we were founded and why, shed some light on these differences. For example, Scripps College was founded in 1926. That was during the time of the women's rights movement in the U.S., and we are founded as a women's college and still are today. CMC was founded just right after World War II. Harvey Mudd College was founded during the space race. If you know anything about Mudd, you probably know they like science and engineering. And Pitzer College was founded in the 1960s, a time of civil rights and social movements in the U.S. So when each college was founded, it can kind of give you an idea of what makes us different, what our values are, and what motivates us as we think about and shape the future of our institutions. So what I love about the Claremont Colleges is that we are all liberal arts colleges. It doesn't matter which one of us you go to in terms of that. You're going to get the benefits of a liberal arts college, regardless of which school you actually attend. Uh, and if you're not familiar with like what the, you know, the benefits of a liberal arts college are, I'd say one big benefit is that you're going to have small class sizes. Our averages range around 15 students. We're not the kind of schools that have like giant lecture hall classes. These classes will be taught by professors who will know your name. They lead classes that are highly discussion based. So you will be a big fish in a small pond. And if you're if that freaks you out and you're thinking, no, no, that seems way too small. Uh, don't worry, because all of us are in this consortium. So it's a big university experience at the same time that it's a small college experience. So for example, some numbers, there are over 6,000 students in total, over 2,000 classes you can choose from each semester, uh, almost 300 student-led cl clubs across the five schools, uh, 17 dining halls and eateries, and the numbers go on. One of my favorite numbers that I like to share is about athletics. So you might be thinking, okay, there are five schools, they probably have five different sports teams. Or maybe they come together and they have one team. Uh, either of those options would make a lot of sense, but actually we do neither of those things. We like to complicate things a little bit in Claremont. Uh, so what actually ends up happening is the five of us divide into two teams. One team is called CMS, 
which stands for Claremont McKenna, RV Mudd, and Scripps Colleges. And the other team is Pomona Pitzer, of course, made up of Pomona College and Pitzer College. And both of these teams, Pomona Pitzer and CMS, actually both play in NCAA Division III, which means that we play against each other right across the street. So it's kind of a place for like a home game. It is also an away game. Uh, it's interesting if you think about it, because let's say you go to Scripps, which plays in CMS, and you have a friend at Pomona. If it's game day, they are not your friends. <laughs> now, uh, you know, if you go to a high school that has a sports rivalry with another school in town, you know, think about that situation. If Now imagine that those students are in your classes, you're involved in clubs together, you hang out. That's kind of how it works here. You're rivals, but you're also best friends. Um, it's a lot out there, but it's just another thing, again, that I think makes our colleges unique. So I mentioned that we are all small liberal arts colleges, and what's fascinating is that we each approach the liberal arts in a different way. I like to say that we have our own flavor of the liberal arts. So now we are each going to spend about five to seven minutes talking about our own colleges uh, and what makes us different. So with that, I will turn it over to my colleague Tom from Pomona. All righty. Thanks so much, Anna Marie. Um, so just an FYI, I have heard that my microphone might be on the quieter side. So if you maybe want to turn up while I'm speaking, just in case you're not hearing me clearly, um, feel free to do that. But hopefully I'm coming in okay. Um, so as Anna Marie mentioned, historically, the Claremont Colleges um, were originated actually with Pomona um, being a standalone institution and then growing in the 1920s. Um, so I always have kind of a difficult time when students will, and families will often ask me, what makes Pomona different from the other Claremont colleges? Because they all have a very distinct identity based on their history. You know, Scripps with the women's suffrage movement and Hitler with the anti-war, anti-Vietnam civil rights. What's Pomona's thing? Um, and to be honest, our answer isn't really a, a great one. It's not a very clear cut. Like, we have this historical movement um, because we don't. Uh, Pomona preceded the idea of that intention behind having schools that were mindful of responding to these you know, important societal challenges. Pomona preceded that very notion. Um, so the founding intent for Pomona was to create a college of the New England type in Southern California. So really bridging the two worlds of New England, which very much is tradition, you know, bringing the best of a small liberal arts college, which is small classes, interpersonal relationships, learning with your, um, your peers in a residential environment, um, to the West Coast, where it was going against the grain, you know, innovation and entrepreneurship. And you see that with you know, with tech advancements in Silicon Valley or in bringing our world to life on the silver screen in Hollywood, right? There are so many images that come to mind when you think of California. Um, the state's motto is Eureka, which means I found it. So Pomona is a place where they want you to discover who you are, how you can best be, you know, a functioning member of our world society and how your unique skills and talents can lend themselves well to that. Um, but again, I realize that that's not a really satisfying answer, so I do want to describe three additional adjectives that I feel are very central to Pomona's identity as an institution, and they are that the students are eager, thoughtful, and reverent. Um, there's a quote on our college gates that reads, let only the eager, thoughtful, and reverent enter here. That was written by James Blaisdell, our college's fourth president and the visionary behind the consortium. Um, and we still like to think that those adjectives are ones that really do, you know, center on all Pomona students today. So. Pomona students are eager. They're eager to get to know one another and be in this residential community. 94% um, of students at Pomona live on campus for all four years, and housing is guaranteed all four years. So you have this community of people who are coming from so many different places. Pomona, according to Niche.com, is the most diverse college in the United States. Over half of our students are students of color. 20% are first generation to college. They come from 60 different countries, 6-0, um, and um, speak 30 different languages. But you all are kind of united with this kind of... Uh, United Front on being excited about being a, at a liberal arts college where you're in clubs and organizations and having these, you know, intellectual discussions with your peers in your hallways. It's very typical at Pomona. One way that that happens is through the sponsor program, which you see um, kind of here on this slide, um, which like and you bond together as a group. You all have kind of some unique uh, thing that bonds you together, whether that's anime or you know, dancing, there's some kind of thing that makes you all live together and have you be, you know, combined that way. Um, the next adjective is thoughtful. So at Pomona, we have 48 different different majors that students have two years to explore and dabble throughout our core curriculum. So you have lots of time and faculty support to figure out what your thing is. And of course, you may have an idea right when you start, um, but you have a lot of flexibility to kind of explore and dabble beyond that. 
Um, one way that Pomona introduces its thoughtfulness in its students is on making interdisciplinary connections. And one way that that happens is through our critical inquiry seminars course. Um, this is a first year course that all students take and it's meant to be kind of out there, right? There's this one that's called the violin is a symbol for evil and they look at different biblical and religious texts and figures throughout history and, and literature. And they say that statistically there's a higher correlation of violin players with negative personality characteristics than any other instrument. So the class just really kind of asks those big why questions. You know, why is that something that we're noticing in our society? Um, and obviously violin players, I'm sure there's many of you on this call and you're lovely people. Um, that's not the biggest world issue that we have to solve today. Um, but it is a kind of great little micro scope and kind of a way to kind of re reframe your mind to think about making connections that are outside of the box or kind of maybe not as laid out for you in plain sight. Um, that's kind of what the Pomona education is all about. And by getting out there to study abroad and research and internship, which, you know, so many Pomona students are doing, as you can see from the slide, that really, really makes for um, a really great uh, way to be a thoughtful member of Pomona's community. And the last adjective is reverent. I'll just leave you with that. To be reverent means to have deep respect and admiration for others. Um, the way that I really learned this was when I uh, first started working at Pomona. Um, I was introduced to the campus by a man named Mo Dyson. He was the, my tour guide. Um, he was a transgender man um, who had uh, served in the United States Marines, um, and he had finished community college before coming to uh, the Claremont, so he was a very non-traditional age student. He had kids. Um, and the way that he, ta he talked about how at home he felt at Pomona, how accepted he felt at a place where even though he had a different lived experience uh, compared to so many of his you know, high school to college peers, um, never once felt like it was a place where his, his identity, his individuality wasn't celebrated. So that's also something that's such a core part of Pomona's culture and values and who we are. Um, and we do hope that maybe you can be an e eager, thoughtful, and reverent contributor in the near future. Um, so with that, I'll pass the baton again on to Yanelli, or uh, actually no, to Anna Marie, uh, to talk about the trip. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tom. Okay. Um, so hi everyone, again my name is Anna Marie Wood and I'm Senior Assistant Director of Admission at Scripps. And like I said, I'm also a graduate from the class of uh, 2013. Uh, my first memory at Scripps is walking up to Honnold Gateway, which is, uh, you'll see that in the next slide. Um, there's a quote on the right side of the gate, it's too small so you won't see it, but it's by our founder, Ellen Brunning Scripps. And the quote reads, uh, the paramount obligation of a college is to develop in its students the ability to think clearly and independently, and the ability to live confidently, courageously, and hopefully. Oh yes, there it is. Um, so we live by these words every day at Scripps, uh, in our classroom environment, in the residential experience, and in our mission as a women's college. So you've already learned a lot about the benefits of a small liberal arts college, and all those ring true at Scripps. So what's distinct about Scripps? Something distinctive that we have at Scripps is called the Core Curriculum in Interdisciplinary Humanities, which we refer to simply as CORE. CORE is the hallmark of a Scripps education. It's a sequence of three classes that all students take in the first year and a half at Scripps. The first class in the sequence, called CORE 1, is a shared academic experience because all first year students are actually automatically enrolled in the exact same CORE 1 class. This class combines lectures with small group discussions, and it's also team taught by a group of 16 Scripps professors from all different academic areas, and they collectively design and teach this class. So they also come up with the theme for the class, which for this year is truth. So it's called Core One Truth. The purpose of CORE is to learn how to analyze, to think about the way that you think, question the assumptions you may have. Um, so with the topic of truth, students and professors are asking questions like, who has the authority to decide the truth? And what if you disagree? How do we even define truth? Um, and because this class is interdisciplinary, you'll explore this very broad concept, truth, from different perspectives. Say from a math perspective, we're learning about big data and machine learning, but also from say like a historical perspective, we're learning about colonialism and indigenous territory in the US and Canada. So those are some common, uh, those are some uh, core, core one lecture topics that happened last fall. So you explore this broad notion of truth in core one, and then afterwards you take core two. And you can choose from a range of core two classes, each of which is taught by an individual professor or team taught with two professors, so still interdisciplinary. Uh, and they're more specific in topic than core one. And then in your second year at Scripps, you take core three, in which you focus on more specialized topics, and then you actually develop an independent research project. So because of course, Scripps students have a shared academic and intellectual experience, because everyone goes through core together. 
And then in your senior year at Scripps, you also have something in common with the rest of your peers. Every Scripps student does a senior thesis. You get, to pick up, you get to pick a problem or topic within your major or majors. About a quarter of our students actually have two majors. Um, and you research and explore that problem, and you spend senior year becoming an expert on that topic. And that's what I love about the four years at Scripps is that you have something in common with your peers at the beginning of your time here, but also at the end of your time here. You have a shared experience with CORE and then again with thesis. So this allows our community to be a tight-knit and collaborative one, and that's especially important to us as a women's college. If I had to define a women's college in you know, a very short phrase, I think I would say, um, you know, it's, it's a place where women support other women. You know, I had no idea that I would end up at a women's college when I was in high school, and that's very common for people who end up at a women's college. Uh, but the person I am today is because of the community that I found at Scripps. It's a community that's focused on building each other up, not down, uh, and knowing that your success is not in conflict with another student's. So, and students form community in a variety of ways outside of the classroom too, whether it's joining, you know, the Baking for Justice Club, that's one of our most popular clubs on campus, or leading an outing somewhere in Southern California for the Outdoor Wilderness Leadership Club, or training your peers to be a barista at our student-run coffee house. So another one of the ways that we bond as a community is through our graffiti wall tradition. Uh, and this tradition has been going on since 1931. Every graduating class at Scripps gets a spot on this wall, and they get to paint whatever they feel depicts their time on campus. Some of these murals are quirky and lighthearted. For example, there's one that just says, uh, you know, woman under construction from 2003. And that's when we were building a new residence hall and some other things. Um, but some of the crafts murals are more serious and challenging. Uh, there's one that just says, stop the war. And that's in reference to uh, the Vietnam War. Uh, or last year's class, which talks about the environment and supporting students on campus and how the administration could do better. So that's what I love about this wall is that it represents what was happening during your time at Scripps, how you were affected by the world around you, uh, and you get to leave your mark on this place before you graduate. And then for years to come, your class's mural will inspire future Scripps students to think about what this place means to them. So when you go to a women's college like Scripps, you kind of end up thinking about history a lot. Uh, at least I did. You know, who came before you, our traditions. But equally, if not more so, you also look to the future. So you think a lot, like, how am I going to contribute to society and make this world a better place for those after me? You kind of have a sense of urgency and passion to leave your mark. And you do so at a place that is supportive, but also challenging. It's a place that is empowering and allows you to empower others. Uh, when you're at a place where female leadership is the norm, you also get to redefine what leadership means. And you just think about things a little differently. You get to ask those tough questions, like I talked about with Core One and Truth. Uh, and you're at a place that values your voice, your identity. You already have a voice, but a women's college is a place where you get to further develop it in the classroom and outside of the classroom. So you may find that what you're looking for in a college experience is what you can find at a women's college, even if you didn't already have women's colleges on your list. Uh, and I encourage you just to keep at least one women's college on your list. Uh, even if it's not scripture, that's OK. Uh, because a women's college give you the place you never knew that you needed. And at the end of the day, the benefit of scripts, as you've already learned, is the best of both worlds. You get the empowering women's college experience, but you also get uh, that immersed in a co-ed environment because of the Claremont Colleges. So uh, I will end my presentation there and turn it over to Yanelli at uh, CMC. Thank you so much, Anna Marie. All right. Well, hello, everyone, once again. I couldn't talk about Claremont McKenna without coming back once again to our history. So we were established in 1946, shortly after the end of World War II. And that meant a couple of things for us. One, we had a number of young men and women who had served for our country through a number of different roles returning home. With them, they had real world experiences under their belts. This was a phenomenal opportunity for our founding fathers to establish a liberal arts community, liberal arts college, that would marry these two worlds together, the liberal arts, the humanities, the social sciences, the theory, if you will, with practice, real world experiences. That was their vision. And what they hoped to do would be our mission, to educate our students to be thoughtful, productive, and responsible leaders in whatever profession it is that they seek to pursue. So having said that, 
we wanted our students to be able to go ahead and pursue economics, international relations, government, psychology, whatever they wanted to do. We wanted them to feel empowered to take a look at the issues, the pressing issues that stand right in front of our community, our local community, our state community, our national community, and be able to ask themselves, what can I do? What action plan can I implement to push the needle forward a bit for our community? And so, with that being said, within our undergraduate curriculum at Claremont McKenna, we do ask that our students actually take about a third of their courses within the humanities social sciences, and then we reserve about a third of their classes for them to be able to pursue the courses for their major, which I will also go ahead and share out that some of the most popular majors are economics, international relations, government, but also psychology, literature, a 3-2 economics engineering program, as well as philosophy, politics, and economics modeled after Oxford University's own program. Then the remaining third of their courses at Claremont McKenna will be reserved for what we deem as elective credits. This is where at CMC we say continue to put that knowledge into practice. And this gives you the opportunity to partake in a couple of different programs that I will talk about in just a bit. But back to our mission. We want our students to engage in debate, in discussion inside the classroom. And so you'll find that within our community, um, when we last polled our students, our incoming first years, about 47% of them identified as liberals, 36% middle of the road, about 13% excuse me, 13 conservative, and about 1% to 4% um, on the further extreme of the left or further extreme of the right. I emphasize that and I share that out because I think it's so important um, to share that at Claremont McKenna diversity of thought is something that we value dearly, that we embrace debate and discussions, and that students at Claremont McKenna want that. Um, and then we tell them, all right, now that you've been questioned, now that you've reflected, go ahead and take that knowledge and put that into practice. Well, students have the opportunity to go ahead and pursue research with professors through one of our 13 research institutes and centers. Only open to Claremont McKenna students. So if a student wants to go ahead and work on redistricting strategies or fiscal analysis, they can go ahead and work at the Rose Institute for Local and State Government. If a student would like to go ahead and dive into what does leadership mean, then they can go ahead and do that at the Kravis Leadership Institute. We have others like the Roberts Environmental Center. Um, we also have the Burger Institute for Work, Family, and Children. About 79% of our undergraduate students at one point or another will have the opportunity and will dive into research with faculty, graduate level research, if you will. Along those lines as well, another pillar, another way that the mission of CMC manifests itself through our programs is through the Washington DC semester program and the Silicon Valley semester program. Every, every undergraduate student at Claremont McKenna has the opportunity to participate in a semester long study program where they're either in Washington DC or Silicon Valley. They're a full-time student and I will also make sure to share out the financial aid, if any of you are any financial aid, that will transfer over with our students to these particular programs. When in DC or Silicon Valley, students are holding a full-time internship. So with a congresswoman, congressman, senator, uh, for a campaign on Capitol Hill, uh, with law firms, with consulting firms, with journalists. Um, in Silicon Valley, it may be Google or Apple or Tesla or a startup company. And they're also continuing and taking on two classes. In Silicon Valley, it's a leadership development course along with economics and finance. In Washington, D.C., it actually focuses on domestic and foreign policy. And the fourth credit that they earn throughout that semester is actually a research project that they go ahead and spearhead on their own. Now, in addition to that, students, of course, are able to go ahead and study abroad, and we all offer those study abroad programs. But again, back to those third, the one-third of elective courses, our students have the opportunity to go ahead and partake in the D.C or the Silicon Valley program, in addition to whatever other major they may be pursuing already on our campus. 
And the other thing I'd like to actually mention is the heart of Claremont McKenna, and that is our Athenaeum at CMC. Every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evening, we will invite a different guest speaker to come and join us for a seated meal, for a talk, and then a dive into a Q&A session. So one evening you may be hearing from Condoleezza Rice, the other from Mitt Romney, the other from Bill Clinton, um, and the other you may be hearing from a journalist, you may be hearing from an author, or you may be hearing from the Mariachi Divas um, performing at CNC. The idea is to also bring these individuals, these le leaders inside of our dining room and give our students the opportunity to engage not just in thought-provoking lectures, but also in those thought-provoking Q&A sessions. Um, the last thing I would say with Claremont McKenna is our sponsored internship program and giving students the opportunity to create eight, eight to ten week long sponsored experiences or internships throughout their entire summers. At Claremont McKenna, the funding that we have available to students runs anywhere between $1,500 upwards of $8,500 of funding. And students can apply beginning their freshman year once again, their sophomore year, and again for the last time, the summer right after their junior year. So those are the big pillars that I wanted to go ahead and focus on at CNC. And with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to my colleague, Roberto. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much, Anneli. Um, hi, everyone again. And this is Roberto Pena. Um, I think first and foremost, uh, hoping you're all staying safe and healthy, you know, during these uncertain times, and we're glad that you could join us uh, virtually. So, um, Harvey Mudd, I'm pretty excited to talk to you about us. I've been here for a little under four years, actually, in a couple of weeks, so pretty excited to celebrate that. Um, you know, I think this is a, a great place for students who are very, very interested in, in getting the, you know, this small private arts college with a focus in STEM, but also, you know, students who are interested in in the humanities, social science, and the arts, while studying at a consortium, right, as a, as a uh, as an undergrad student. So um, if there's one thing that I do want you to remember for, you know, for this talk, we're all very mission oriented and, and so is MUD, right? So our mission statement says, we seek to educate mathematicians, scientists, and engineers who are well-versed in those areas, but who are also well-versed in the humanities, social science, and the arts, so you can assume leadership positions in your roles, but also be aware of the kind of impact your work has on society, right? I think that last portion is what really drew me into this college. It's what really draws students into our institution. You have all this STEM background, uh, but how are you going to use it to impact those around you, right? Um, so just on that last slide, we do offer 10 majors. They're all in STEM. So I'll list them off quickly for you. Chemistry, biology, joint major in chemistry and biology, computer science, computer science and mathematics, a computational biology and mathematics course, more math, right? And not just at MUD, but there's over 200 math courses you can take across the five campuses. Um, we have engineering, we have physics, and physics and mathematics. So you have to have a pretty good idea that you want to have study math or, or STEM. Um, the thing about MUD is we also have a core, right? And our core is a STEM core, right? So you see here 70% of your courses will be in STEM fields. The reality is your first third at MUD is through the Common Core, where you will be taking a class in pretty much every department that I just listed to you. Um, the idea behind it is to, we're creating generalists. We want students to see how interdisciplinary STEM is, um, you know, how is chemistry related to mathematics, how is computer science related to engineering, et cetera. Um, so it's important for us to really um, dive deep into that for students uh, coming to mud. Uh, the Common Core also serves a, a very collaborative, you know, spirit that exists here at mud. I think a lot of students are always surprised um, with that collaboration that exists here. Um, and then with that very same thing, right, students are able to help each other out, right? Maybe you as an individual might find yourself loving physics more than you love chemistry, which is great, right? Uh, maybe you love computer science more than you love another subject. The idea behind the Common Core is to help students really come together and collaborate with each other. Right? And being at a small institution, one of the highlights of our institution is these, these last two slides that you just saw, right? So research and clinic. Um, we are a strictly undergraduate institution, so that means you'll never have a teaching assistant here, a graduate student. It's always your professors teaching you. Um, and with that, you know, every student is required to do research on our campus. Um, you can do it over the summer, you can do it throughout the year. We've had students start as early as their freshman year to do research. Um, you will be a little bit busy with the Common Core, but it's, it's very possible. Um, Every major is required to do a capstone project, which will manifest itself in two different ways, either this current project or um, all original work. So for engineers and non-engineers, uh, computer scientists and computer scientists, CS math majors, they're required to do a clinic project, which is an industry-sponsored opportunity for you to work with 
pretty large companies, right? We worked with Google, with SpaceX, Mercedes, Toyota, um, a wide range of companies, right? And so basically the idea is you and a group of four to five people will come together with their faculty. Um, the companies will send us a liaison to your um, to mud and they will bring a problem that the company is currently facing, right? And so the idea is for you to come up with solutions for these companies. Typically about a third of these uh, credit projects become patents. And it's very, it's very common for students to be offered jobs um, through these clinic projects as well. Um, so it's something that we've been able to, we've been doing for a number of years now, and it's something that we continue to do. And every year, um, you know, students are, are, are going through that clinic project, right? Um, the other things I think I want to highlight about MUD is, is the student experience, right? One of the things that we have at MUD is the student honor code. Uh, which basically says, don't be that person, right? Don't be the person that jeopardizes uh, the community's academic integrity, um, that, you know, puts the community, uh, jeopardizes the community's safety, right? But it really comes with a lot of trust. Um, so that the notion of collaboration and trust that exists at MUD, I think students really appreciate. Um, and to be quite sincere with you, people love, love just the community at MUD. Um, I always describe it as like, the reason for it is there's 900 nerds at MUD, right? There's, there's a lot of students that you can you know, taught very high technical STEM level things that you're interested in, um, but also students who are interested in things outside of STEM, right? They, they, they see the value in bringing non-STEM um, subjects into their education. Um, so the last thing I do want to put in a plug for is we still have uh, space for a couple of our virtual fly-in programs. It's called FAST. So that application is available on our website, and I'm happy to put the, you know, the link in our chat later down the line. So with that being said, I'll turn it over to um, Pitcher. Perfect. Hi, everyone. As I said earlier, my name is Talia Dran. I'm an admission counselor and an alum from Pitzer College, so I can answer both alums and admission questions. Um, but Pitzer, being the youngest out of the Claremont Colleges, as we mentioned, each of the schools has a very big focus um, on pretty much differentiating ourselves based on our mottos. So for Pitzer, our motto is Pro Vida Futuri, which is Latin for mindful of the future. Um, and so that's kind of what you're going to see at Pitzer. We have five core values that really distinguish us from the rest of the Claremont Colleges. Um, and to just kind of list those off, they are environmental sustainability, intercultural understanding, interdisciplinary learning, social responsibility, and student engagement. Um, I'll go through really quickly to just kind of give you an idea on what they mean. Um, but those are pretty much the five uh, pillars that uphold any Pitzer student at any given time. Um, and to give you an idea, so for Pitzer, environmental sustainability, we look very different from the rest of the Claremont Colleges. If this had been a normal year, I'm sure many of you would have came to the campuses and actually gotten a chance to visit. Um, but Pitzer, we have what's called uh, cacti, succulents, um, sagebrush, all these different things on our campus that we just do not look like a normal college campus. We don't have luscious green lawns. Um, and so instead, you're going to find a lot of environmentally led efforts um, that are led by students on our campus. That's kind of what separates us. Um, most of Pitzer's initiatives are led by students. The biggest one that happened um, is actually our divestment effort. So for Pitzer, we were the first school on the West Coast to actually divest our entire endowment from fossil fuels, which means not a single of Pitzer's money is going towards the fossil fuel industry, which is really big to say. We're still waiting for the rest of the Claremont Colleges to join us on that front, but um, that's kind of one of the biggest things that you'll see at Pitzer. It's student-led initiatives on that on that sense. Um, but kind of going from there, another thing to mention is intercultural understanding. So study abroad, this slide you'll see, um, study abroad is a big part of being a Pitzer student. We do have study abroad options. Um, we do like to plug our eight direct run programs. I did get a chance to go when I was at Pitzer. Um, and those eight direct run programs actually give you the opportunity to A, come back a hit on credits to graduate from Pitzer. Um, you actually go with the cohort of Pitzer students. You usually um, actually visit multiple different countries and institutions while you're there. Um, um, so when I went, it was five months in three different countries, three different host families learning three different languages, which is really cool. It's very intensive, um, but it's an opportunity for you to expand yourself um, because obviously the five C's and Pitzer as an institution is very diverse, but there's a lot to learn outside of our borders. So that's something you'll see. Um, kind of jumping to the next part and what really separates us in regards to inter our interdisciplinary learning is the fact that Pitzer doesn't have departments at all. We have what's called field groups. And so at Pitzer, a field group can be composed of a human bio professor, an environmental analysis professor, a sociology and a chemistry professor. Together, they will all come together and actually teach courses. Um, and oftentimes, you'll have two to three professors teaching. Um, and so that's where projects like our Inside Out program or, you know, our joint medical program or all these different other things come to, or come to fruition because it's our professors that are collaborating and creating new classes on a con 
on a constant basis. Um, we joke about it in the admissions office. We can never keep up with the amount of new classes that are being created at Pitzer because there's just so much to do. Um, so that's kind of one thing that you will see. And in regards to interdisciplinary learning, the other thing to know is that most of Pitzer's classes are seminar styled. We don't really have lectures at Pitzer. Um, oftentimes you're going to find about 10 to 15 students all sitting in a circle and talking about your classes. We want to bring your experiences to the forefront of your Pitzer education. From there, um, social responsibility is another big aspect. So Pitzer's graduation requirements look a little bit different than the rest of the core or the rest of the Claremont colleges. Um, we don't have a core curriculum, quote unquote. Um, instead, what we have is actually that you're going to take two humanities, two social science is one quantitative reasoning, which is a very fancy way of saying math course, um, and natural science with a lab component, your first year seminar, and then your social justice praxis and social justice theory. Um, your social justice praxis and theory are the biggest parts. It's pretty much where you're going to go off campus and actually get an opportunity to learn about the Southern California community that you're coming to actually take classes in. Um, so that's kind of the biggest part. The theory is the classroom component. The praxis is actually going out into the community. Um, and then, of course, from there for our last core value, student engagement, that's pretty much how However, you choose to get involved at Pitzer at the five season general. There's so many clubs, as we mentioned, hundreds of clubs at your fingertips. Um, I always like to talk about the fact that I started a club when I was at Pitzer. I was a fellow. I was a um, Spanish tutor. There's so much to do. And so it's a big part of being a Pitzer student. Um, just in general, Pitzer as an institution has a lot to offer. Um, and so that's kind of what you're going to see and in regards to uh, Provida Futuri and just being mindful of yourself um, and your position as a Pitzer student. Um, so, that's kind of my very, very quick spiel on Pitzer. Um, I know this kind of wraps up our end, so I'm going to be our moderator for our Q&A section. Um, if everybody, yeah, it was like if everybody else wants to turn their mics back on as we go ahead and jump into the Q&A. There are many questions that we went ahead and started um, about answering live. So why don't we just kind of start off really quickly. Um, I know most of us talked about study abroad opportunities, but somebody was asking, um, can students from one school participate in study abroad opportunities at the other institutions? Um, anybody wants to jump in on this? Yeah, I can take that. Um, sure can. So I know actually several students who have done um, a study abroad program or semester program through other Claremont colleges. It's very common. Um, I know, for example, there is a program in Morocco that I believe is run through Claremont McKenna um, through the Arabic department. Um, and I know two students at Pomona who have done that, and vice versa. There's been Claremont McKenna students who have done Pomona, Harvey Mudd, or Pomona programs, Harvey Mudd programs. Um, definitely, there is a lot of shared um, access to those programs across the consortium. Um, same with the Silicon Valley semester internship program, the Washington, D.C. semester program. Uh, Pomona students will frequently take advantage of that success. If those for students as well. So, um, yeah, definitely have one big benefit of the consortium is those off-campus opportunities are often very shared. Perfect. I know we had a lot of questions about the Silicon Valley, our Valley, as well as the DC program. So you answered all of it first, Tom. <laughs> um, alrighty. So next question. This is a little bit different. Um, will there be a decrease in admission rates for the class of 2025 for all five colleges because of the increase in deferrals for the class of 2024? Um, anybody want to jump in on this one? <laughs> Yeah, I can go ahead and start with that, and then um, uh, hopefully I'm speaking on behalf of my colleagues, but if not, feel free to jump in. But I think it's a common question that we've been getting in the admission office, and one thing I um, just like to remind everyone when, when that question is asked is that there's so many factors that go into uh, when we admit a class and how we do admissions. It's not, it's not just the previous year's class. It's also how many students are graduating from that college or how many students are returning, not returning from fall to spring semester. So um, there's something called FTE. It's full-time enrollment. It's a, it's a little acronym that we have in the enrollment management world. And so when we are thinking about admission for each year, we're looking at the entire higher colleges enrollment, not just year to year. Um, so do keep in mind that that is something that is top of mind for us, is that we know that, that this year to next year is going to be a little different, but there's a lot of factors that go into uh, admission for a class. I know that may not be the answer you want to hear. Or we, you know, there's still a lot of uncertainty, and um, I don't know if my colleagues have any other more certain answers, but that's what I have to provide at this point. No, I think you pretty much answered it, unless anybody else has anything to add? Are we good? Perfect. Okay, so um, I know some of us kind of 
jumped on this a little bit, but obviously we're a rush for time. Um, so if you get accepted to one of the five C's, can you major at any of the other colleges? Um, I know this is different in specific per institution, so I wanted to give us a chance to go ahead and answer. Um, the second part of this question is, if so, can that major be offered, or can, that, can any major offered at the second school Wait, I am totally reading this correctly. Um, if so, can that be any major offered at that second school, or is it limited to just a few majors at the other Claremont Colleges? Um, so I can go ahead. Oh, I, for a second, I thought I froze. Um, yeah, so for Pitzer, you, we are one of the few Claremont Colleges that allows you to major off of our campus. There's pretty much only one major that is a little hard to do, and it's computer science at Harvey Mudd, but the rest of it is completely open to you. Um, so go ahead and we'll jump down the line. I'll let Yanelli answer next. Thank you, Natalia. Yeah, so we're in a very similar situation as Pitzer. Uh, Claremont McKenna says, if you find a major off campus that you would like to go ahead and pursue, please go ahead. Just make sure that you are required to complete all of the courses required to fulfill that major in order to have your diploma be granted within that area. And I would also make a note that, yes, computer science is just oh so popular. So it is a tad bit, I would say, impacted um, within the consortium. But that's what I have to say. I was going to say, for, for MUD, there are options to do off-campus majors. Um, so part of your, your requirements here is you do a, you know, a major and then you do a concentration in the humanities, social science, and the arts. If you decide to do an off-campus major, you know, we have a colleague who did um, neuroscience at Pomona. You're required to minor in one of the 10 majors that we offer. Here. So it is, a, it is a possibility. Um, not a lot of students do it, though. At Scripps, we do a lot. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, at Scripps, we do allow students to major off campus if we do not offer the major. Um, and and there's no if you want to have both. Like, if you want to have two majors off campus and a minor off campus and go to Scripps, it's probably not that common. But I guess theoretically, you could do it. Uh, so as long as we don't offer the major. And also to add another layer to this, I don't know if we already said it. Um, but there are also um, joint majors between the colleges. Um, so, for example, I was an anthropology major, and that is a joint scripts pitzer program. So I wasn't technically an off-campus major, even though a lot of my classes were off-campus. So another layer to this. Yeah, so we get this question a lot. Um, I mean, all of our offices do. And um, at Pomona specifically, we don't actually allow off-campus majors. Um, the reason being is because Pomona actually offers 48 majors, and there's very few academic programs at the other Claremont colleges that Pomona does not have some version of, maybe different names for it, but essentially, they essentially offer the courses and majors that the other schools do. There's an accounting program at Claremont McKenna, and an art conservation program at Scripps that are a little more niche. But beyond that, it is pretty um, accessible to major in what you want to study academically on Pomona's home campus. But again, taking advantage of the courses across the consortium is a huge benefit. And I always tell students that I think there's a preoccupation with majors that's actually a little much. Um, you know, if you take, for example, six courses in Italian at Scripps, and you didn't major or minor in it as a Pomona student, people, you still know how to speak Italian. You can still go out and you've gone to Italy perhaps, like you've maybe done the study abroad program. Um, you can confidently have that be something that's part of your college experience and talk about that in job interviews or in fellowship interviews, things like that. So I definitely tell students to not worry so much about like the fine print. You know, all of our diplomas look the same. They say Bachelor of Arts from whatever institution you went to. Um, so that's just something I like to put out there as a, a little bit of an ease of the anxiety around like the nuts and bolts and distinctions because again the vast majority is shared and accessible across campus. Great, perfect. All right, so next question. Um, this is in regards to admission interviews. Which of the colleges require or recommend interviews and what does this look like? Um, so I'll just quickly answer for Pitzer. Interviews are optional. Um, they are recommended, but they're in, in no way required. So it's kind of one thing to know. Um, and they're, co or they're conducted by admission fellows, so senior interviewers in our office. I'll jump in here once again as well. So for Claremont McKenna College, uh, interviews are optional. Uh, but in the spirit of full transparency, we say highly, highly recommended. Um, it truly is an opportunity for us to be able to get to know you better and, and hear about the experiences that you've had, why you've pursued such experiences, both on the academic front and on the uh, extracurricular front. So um, definitely would encourage you to go ahead and interview.
Scripps will say, oh, go ahead. Like income or Roberta. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. For scripts, I'll say that uh, similar to Pitzer's answer, we do not require them um, and they are optional um, and they truly are optional. So we will not, if you don't have one, we will not wonder, why didn't they interview? We, it really is optional for scripts. For mud, yeah, we, we do not require them either. We encourage them, but we understand that not everyone has um, the same access to come to campus. Now that we're virtual, we you know we can definitely take advantage of that, but we understand it won't make or break your application. I will say that. Um, so at Pomona, we don't measure demonstrated interest in our admissions process at all. Um, so while we do offer interviews as an option for students and through our alumni network program, um, they're completely optional. There's not a, a measurable substantial difference in acceptance rate between students who interview and those who do not. Um, but it can be a great opportunity to get to know an alum from Pomona and hear more about their experiences. And they do type up a, a write-up and send it our way. Um, so definitely an option if you're comfortable with that, but if you are totally anxious about interviews and make you a nervous wreck, it is not something that we push on students by any means. Perfect. All right. And I thought this next question would be great because we have so many alums on the panel, but uh, what are each of your favorite parts of working at your individual college? Um, so I will not go first on this one. I will let one of you all go first this time. <laughs> I think my favorite part is seeing just what I loved about the Scripps experience and seeing that come through in my experience as a staff member. Um, I was answering this with a student in the chat just right now, but um, the community that I found at Scripps is really, really what I liked. Everyone is just so inspiring and interesting, uh, and I continue to find that in the community. It's been seven years now since I've um, graduated from Scripps, and it's still it's, it's the place that um, really just had a big impact on me, and it continues to have that. I'll jump in here once again. So uh, along the lines of what Anna Marie shared, I think it, it truly is the individuals. It's the community. Um, the fact that at CMC, as a student, I, I did feel like I was always being challenged to be the best version of myself that I could possibly be. Um, and really felt like I, in through my conversations, I stopped and I had to reflect on my own beliefs and, and really think about what I can do for my community. And I, I see that every single day um, being lived out by our students. So they, there's no cutthroat environment. It's all about collaboration. And if you are being pushed, it's because they genuinely believe that you can continue to grow as an individual, as a scholar, as a professional. Okay, well, um, just kind of given the like time, we're going to go ahead and we'll just jump to the next question. <laughs> um, so why don't we talk a little bit about research opportunities at the five C's, what types are available um, at the different institutions? Yeah. Um, I can, I guess I can kind of just jump in on this for Pitzer. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities. Granted, like you have the Keck Science Program, so the Keck Science Department is shared you know, um, Science Center between Claremont, Kenna, Scripps, and Pitzer. That's an opportunity there um, for myself when I was at Pitzer. I actually did, um, oh my gosh, it was research through Harvey Mudd funded by the National Science Foundation. It was a focus in environmental justice and data science combined, um, which is something that you probably don't really hear much about, but it's a very intersectional opportunity. And so that's something that you will see um, through their data science department. So a lot of schools do have opportunities. Um, they're called research uh, experiences for undergraduates or REUs available at the schools. So that's kind of one thing to know. Anybody else want to jump in? At Mud, I mean, uh, I, part of my presentation was that, right, every student is required to do research. Um, then you have your capstone project, which is your own individual research or the clinic project that exists. Um, and you're not limited to just uh, researching your area of interest. If you wanted to dabble in some chemistry research, but you're a physics major, you're more than welcome to. You do up to four years of research um, through the summer throughout the academic year. At Scripps, inherently, everyone will do research as well because it's everyone is required to complete senior thesis, um, and that's not a common thing for at the undergraduate level. At you know most colleges across the country, to require that undergraduates do a thesis, so that is something that's a little different about Scripps, and it means again everyone is doing it at some point before they leave. Yeah, and for the sake of time, I'll, I mean, I'll just be really brief. Lots of students that want to do research, 53% um, in one given year, um, and the vast majority, more than 70% are going to have completed one by the time they graduate. And just like Scripps, 
promoted students to complete a capstone or a thesis project as well. So that is kind of like a research, you know, endeavor and initiative that you take on your senior year. Um, one of our students, Michelle Lee, she did math research at Harvey Mudd um, the summer of her junior year. And vice versa, there's been Mudd students who've done research at Pomona. So again, really, I'm probably just beating this to death, but like, we really are a very collaborative environment and these opportunities, for the, for the most part, there are some nuances and specificities um, are definitely very shared. Okay, perfect. So in the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and just read this one and answer it all. And if anybody has anything to add, um, but the question is, do the Claremont Colleges have community service oriented groups or clubs and or academic groups and clubs? And what are some examples? Um, I know for Pomona and Pitzer, so Pomona has the Draper Center, which is really known for, you know, community engagement. Um, and then at Pitzer, we have what's called the Community Engagement Center. So the CEC, those are two. Um, I'm sure there are ones at the other Claremont Colleges that I am just completely blank on at this complete moment, but there are multiple different um, kind of community service uh, components outside of the Claremont Colleges, and we are very big um, in just kind of being part of our community at the Claremont, in Claremont and Southern California in general. Yeah. Um, and then we have about three minutes left, so do we have time for about one more question? I'm thinking. Um, okay, there's so many questions, so why don't we go ahead um, and just really quickly answer this one in regards to financial aid and scholarships for any international students. How does that look at each of your respective institutions? Okay. I'll go ahead and start and I'll answer it um, broadly too just for uh, domestic students in case anyone's wondering. So um, Scripps would be 100% of financial need um, and about 60% of our students are on some kind of aid. We also have some merit scholarships. Um, for international students, aid is limited, um, but um, so but we do we do if we admit students, we do meet 100% of their need. That's great. Completely answered. So. Yeah. So at Pomona, um, we need 100% of demonstrated financial need for all admitted students. Um, we are need blind for all um, U.S. citizens and permanent residents, anyone who lives in the United States, including undocumented students. Um, and we also are loan free with our financial aid. So what that means is that between the total cost of attendance and your family's contribution, the rest of it is covered through grant scholarship money by Pomona um, or a work study award. Um, we do not offer merit scholarships, athletic scholarships. Um, and we are need aware for international students, but do keep in mind that half of our international students are getting 100% of demonstrated need and are getting financial from college. So you definitely should not be um, scared to apply or not think it's not worth it because, um, again, half of international students do receive aid in college, full need, full aid, depending on their needs. For Claremont McKenna College, uh, we are need blind um, for our U.S. citizens, permanent residents, and undocumented students. Um, we are need aware for our international students. However, I will say that any applicant that applies by on or by December 1st uh, will be considered for all the merit scholarship that we offer at CMC, um, and it is only for first-year students. So definitely encourage you to go ahead and apply by that deadline. And then much similar to Claremont McKenna, uh, need aware for international students, need blind for U.S. citizens and permanent residents. Um, all students are considered for merit scholarships, though, um, and every student is automatically considered for that. So. Yeah, and just quickly for Pitzer, um, so we are need aware for all applicants, so international and domestic and undocumented, um, but we do meet 100% of your or your 100% of your demonstrated need. <laughs> um, so that's something to know a little bit about us uh, and just kind of how we differ in that process. Um, but it is six o'clock, so Anna Marie, if you want to wrap it up. Yes, awesome. Thank you so much, Natalia, for moderating the Q&A. And thank you so much to my uh, the fellow presenters for presenting about your institution uh, and chatters for uh, helping answer all the many, many questions that we got in the Q&A. So students, I know we were not able to answer all of the questions. Um, and we may also have talked about things that you aren't totally familiar with. Like maybe you're thinking, what's need blind? What's need aware? Uh, or what does it mean to meet 100% of need? So please, um, you see our email addresses here on the screen. Please reach out to us to ask these questions or learn more about other virtual opportunities. I believe all of us have some sort of like virtual info sessions or virtual tours or ways that you can engage with our admission offices to learn more about admissions, financial aid, campus life, and academics at our own schools and across the Claremont Colleges. So thank you so much for joining with us and we hope to see you again at some point.